Today in the grain market, soybeans were lower. That bearish USDA report uh, did bring in more selling. I think there's just too many beans out there for the market to actually rally. It seems that demand is really going to be uh, the next focus, and right now it's carrying somewhat of a bearish tone, and it's bringing futures back to prices that we haven't seen since March 31st. Um, that uh, no expiration is also a week away. And so we just see like the market kind of gravitating towards the strike that has the highest open interest and options. And that's uh, the $12 mark. And we certainly got there uh, in a hurry. And it looks like now trade is starting to move, is going to start to move uh, to the January uh, futures. Right now, the CVAL is the lowest it's been in a number of months at 18.9%. Uh, now the CVAL in soybean oil is 314 and meal 19.8% all a little bit lower with the soybean oil actually the strongest of the three in the soybean complex. Um, the uh, open interest is that $12 mark and that is uh, the magnet for now. Now corn did fall as well, it was a little bit kind of a surprise, but uh, those ending stocks were higher than expected and that just ignited a lot of uh, liquidation. Um, you know, also it was kind of like, you know, buy the rumor, sell the fact kind of thing that now that we got the information out, there's nothing else to hold the market up. And we started to, you know, get a little bit of selling, you know, and the future's going right to the highest open interest. And we knew that it was at the $5 mark. I didn't expect it to get there so quickly, but sure enough, that's kind of what's happening right now. Expiration now for the December uh, contract of uh, corn is now inside 45 days. So the, cream, the premium curve is, you know, happening right now uh, with the December open interest also declining as well. Now the CVAL in corn is at 24% um, and the open interest at that $5 mark seems to be uh, an area where uh, uh, the... Uh, corn could accumulate. It's just something to know. I'm not sure that that's actually going to happen, but it's certainly got there in a hurry. Uh, wheat did also have a sharp drop. I think it's the new uh, eighth session low, which is kind of a, a surprise there. Uh, again, uh, it's like the highest open interest was the $7 mark. We get right to it. Uh, the impact of that bullish USDA report just seemed to be short-lived. Once we got all that information, then everybody just kind of, uh, you know, gave up what they got and, um, push the move, uh, the new, the, um, the futures a little bit lower. I think that's what's kind of interesting is that there's no other news now to move the needle on wheat, even though overall, fundamentally, there's still uh, some positive things with the CVAL now at 24%. Uh, the, you know, it's just, you know, starting to get a little bit lower and lower. Uh, I dare I say that now we look towards the November USDA report. I mean, uh, it just seems kind of a long way off, but we're, certainly we're going to be watching demand numbers or anything out of China. Uh, wheat has the is the strongest of the three main grains. You know, perhaps uh, we can, you know, start, stop the slide a little bit right now. It, it, but meanwhile, there there is an oversold situation uh, really on all the grains, but today uh, lower really across the board.